In this video, I'm going to have a go at making an industrial style chair. I saw one like this some time ago. I thought it looked great, so I'm going to have a go at replicating it. It was originally made by Ruby Owens. I like the proportions and the overall look, especially the leg setup where they all cross and intertwine with each other. I made this sketch and put down some rough dimensions to get me started and I'll start with the legs and for those I'm using 20 by 5 millimeter mild steel flat bar. Cutting the flat bars to length will give me a chance to try out my new cheap little bandsaw for the very first time. The legs will be bent, I'll do that manually on the fly press and to help keep them consistent I'll first make a template out of plywood. It'd be easier to bend the flat bar along the wide face of the bar, but I actually need to bend it across the edge. To help with that, I've just welded up this simple jig for the fly press. That's working really well. I'll keep checking it against the template to find out where I need to bend it next. There'd be many ways to bend the legs. This just seemed to be the best way for me with the setup that I have. It actually bends that well on the fly press, it's easy to go too far, plus I should have checked it more often than what I did, and because of that the end needs bending back a bit. That's got the bend pretty good, I'm happy with that, now I need to flatten it the opposite way. I've made a mistake on this one, so I'm going to remake it and call this a practice piece. I did overwork it anyway, and I'm going to be more careful on the next ones. I've marked out the area of the base of the chair, and where I went wrong is I came halfway across from corner to corner this way, and what I should have done is come across uh, from the diagonal, so I'm this much short. I've made a new template, and luckily I'd left enough on the end of the bars that I've cut already uh, that there's enough on there to reuse them. They all came out pretty consistent, so next I'm clamping them to a piece of wood to see how they look together. 
Each leg is made from two pieces, so next I'll make the second pieces. I'm using the practice leg from earlier on to work out what bend I need, as these pieces will go over the top of the next leg around. Now I'm happy with that, I'll make a template and I'll get on with bending the rest of the leg pieces. Now that all the pieces are made, I'll drill holes and that's for bolting them all together. That's the holes drilled in the first set of leg pieces, I'll use one of those as a guide for drilling the others. The ends aren't all quite the same, so I'll bolt them together and grind them down. Next I'm making blocks and they'll be used to join the legs together.
I'm using galvanized bolts throughout the project and I'm putting them in vinegar to strip off the galve. Next I'll do a test fit just to make sure that it all goes together okay. It was a bit of a wrestle to get the feet together, but with a little force, I got there. I should have left more room between the pieces. I'll know for next time if I ever make another one. Now I'll take it apart again and work on the top so I can attach a seat to it. And I'll put the bolts back in vinegar so it can carry on doing its thing. The first thing I'll do is drill holes for fixing the seat and then I'll bend the top of the legs over. They're all done, now I need to round over the ends of the feet. I could have left the legs as they were, but I decided to clean them up ready for blackening. I'm not going for perfection as I think an irregular finish will suit an industrial chair, but I am still getting them pretty good. I'm blackening them with gum blue, but first I need to clean them down with acetone. After 30 seconds or so, it needs rinsing with water to stop the chemicals from working further. The bolts have been getting a good soaking in vinegar and I've blackened those two off camera. And to finish them, I'm wiping on boiled linseed oil. I could just bolt the feet together and it wouldn't look too bad, but I'm going to attempt to make the same style feet from the original stool. On those, I think they were cast from lead, but I'm going to make mine from aluminium. I'll start by drilling a centre hole and that will help me to mount it to the lathe. This dreadnought file is awesome for working with soft metals, it takes off a decent sized chip and it doesn't clog. As I don't have a metal lathe, this was the best way I could think to make them. The feet will be a ball, so just like the original ones, I'll make them in two halves. I'll do that by rounding over the end of the rod and then cutting it off to make one half. 
I reckon that looks pretty good and they don't have to be perfect as long as they come out fairly similar to each other. Next I need to drill a recess for a bolt head. I ordered a milling machine a while back which would have been handy for this but as I don't have it yet I'll use one of my end mills in the drill press and give that a go. Now I need to make another recess for the foot to go into. The miller machine would have been handy for this too, but again, I need to find an alternative method. So I'm going to use my laminate trimmer with a regular cheap woodworking bit. It's doing the job easily. It just took lots of light passes. The last thing to do is file a hole square on one of the halves and that's for a carriage bolt to fit into. It was a bit of work but they actually all came out pretty nice. To help line the feet up easier, I loosened off all the leg bolts and that really did make a difference. They're not perfect, but considering the method I used to make them, I reckon they turned out great. Now on to making a seat, and because I need to bend ply later on to make a backrest, I'll be using these four millimeter bracing ply offcuts and laminating them together. And because I want the seat to match, I'll be using the same for that too. I'm alternating the grain between the layers so it'll appear like a regular piece of plywood when looking at the edges.
bracing ply isn't the best and certainly not a plywood you'd normally use for a finish. It's very splintery, I wasn't careful enough and I ended up with some tear out. I could have remade it but I decided to just go with filler. I need to bend the ends over a little and also create a slight incline sloping down at the back. I'm using carriage bolts again to fix the seat and I blacken those off camera. It's starting to look pretty good, now onto the backrest and the first thing there is to make a bending form. I'm alternating the grain direction again between the layers. The long grain ones don't bend easily and it would have been easier to make the whole thing with the short grain faces, but that wouldn't have looked that good and hopefully the long grain faces bend and don't break. I put packing tape on the form and also on an extra piece of plywood and this will help distribute the pressure more evenly. I learned my lesson earlier with the tear out so I'm adding tape before making these cuts. I also kept well away from the line as it really does splinter very easily.
Next, I need to make support arms for the backrest and to help me figure out the length of bar I need, I use these straps as a guide. To fix the arms I'll weld on small tabs, on the original chair the ends were twisted over but I reckon I prefer this method I'm using and it won't change the overall look of it too much. I clean them up a little off camera using the belt grinder and next I'll shape the ends of the arms. I made a mistake drilling the first hole, I shouldn't have gone all the way through, but some extra filler will just go with the rest of the filler that I've already used. I forgot to blacken any screws and these are just underneath so I coloured them in with a sharpie. It's pretty comfortable and I'm very happy with it. The last thing to do is apply some finish. For that I'm using boiled linseed oil, the same as the steel. And if it needs freshening up at a later date, I can just wipe oil over the whole thing. I really do like it, but I probably made it a touch too high. I was looking at making a high chair, but a bit lower would have been better. But to solve that, I'm going to add a footrest, but that's it for this video now. I'll add that and I'll show that on Instagram, so be sure to check me out there. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.